melee combat is going to be a massive part of Battlefield 1. DICE have spent a lot of time refining the system that was present in previous games and tried to make it a bigger and better part of this game. They've released some information on the system and how it works. There are many more factors at play than you might think, and I thought I'd bring that information to you guys. If you've played in the closed alpha or the open beta, then you'll have a general understanding of how it works, but it seems there's a little bit more to it than just that. First off, the reason for overhauling the old melee system. World War I saw a lot of close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat with a variety of weapons, and DICE wanted to emphasize that in Battlefield 1. Now beyond simply fitting it into the setting, I think we can all say that regardless of the awesome feeling that you got when taking down players in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 with that melee system, it wasn't exactly implemented very well. The animations were a little bit wonky sometimes, latency on the network could seemingly cause players to lock onto you by spamming the melee button from distances that were really just too far away, and sometimes in Battlefield 4, which introduced the counter knifing feature, mid takedown of a normal animation for some reason, that animation could completely change on your screen and then you would be the one being killed. It could be really infuriating despite knowing what DICE were trying to achieve with it. Battlefield 1 has tried to remove a lot of those annoyances and the developers have introduced a wider variety of melee weapons and separated them into categories as well, allowing different types of weapons to perform differently in melee combat. According to DICE, there are three different types of melee weapons that will be available in Battlefield 1. First of all, the knives, we knew about those from previous games. You've also then got clubs and bladed special weapons. Each of these different categories will have their own strengths and weaknesses inside these three different parameters. First of all, the speed in which you can swing the weapon, the damage they deal when the weapon lands a hit on a player, and the activation range in which you can perform a full melee takedown. Now don't forget, Battlefield 1 has swipe melee combat, which is something that was missing from Battlefield 4. To give you a bit of a feeling how each of these three types of melee weapon perform, you've got the knives, the clubs and the specials, DICE has given us a few examples. The knives, as in the past, are the weapon of stealth and reward. They're the fastest to swing in front of you, meaning you can swipe knife players from the front or the side to try and get a close quarters kill, but with swiping, they deal the least amount of damage to an enemy player. They do have the biggest takedown radius, however, so if you approach an enemy from the sides or from behind, the knife will invariably activate the takedown mechanic. Now, the clubs are sort of a middle ground in the collection of weapons, dealing a medium level of damage when swiped out to hit an enemy, but you cannot swipe them as fast as you can with the knives. Also, their takedown zone when approaching an enemy from behind is a bit smaller than the knives as well. They're a blunt instrument and they aren't as stealthy. And finally, the special melee weapons like the pickaxe, the shovel and the hatchet. They're the heavy hitters in this group, dealing maximum damage when going for a swipe kill on the enemy, but they are much slower to activate. To take down a player with the specials via an animation is a lot harder. The zone is considerably smaller than the other melee weapons. So here, your best shot is to maybe spring head-on into players and attempt to kill them with a well-aimed melee hit to the chest. When you first start the multiplayer, DICE will give you three different options for the melee weapons, and you'll get one from each category. So there will be a knife, there'll be a club, and then you'll have the shovel as the special. As you progress through the multiplayer, gaining XP and war bonds, you'll be able to unlock different melee weapons within those categories, and be able to customize the look of your soldier by choosing something that you like the feel of. Apparently, some of the melee weapons can cut through barbed wire, they can break down wooden barricading, and even damage light vehicles. Now, DICE haven't said which ones do that, but that's pretty interesting stuff, and I'm sure somebody on the first day that Battlefield 1 comes out will be able to show us a takedown of a light vehicle 
with one of the melee weapons. That sounds really interesting. Beyond the standard melee mechanic, I think we've all had a go with the new bayonet charge system that can be activated on weapons that have a bayonet attached. Your player enters this focused rage state, screaming his bloody head off, sprinting at unhumanly speeds towards an enemy, and then plunges the blade through their body and confirming the kill. There are a few mechanics worth mentioning here though, so you have all the information at hand when you go into the multiplayer. When you enter that charge state, your soldier will take a little bit less damage from incoming fire, and that's to simulate the adrenaline rushing through as you try to execute that attack. The reduced damage isn't a huge amount, but it may just be enough for you to reach the target and then take them down. If you fail to hit a target, you will be limited in your sprint abilities for the next five seconds or so as your body calms down from the charge. If you manage to take down a player, then you won't be subject to that sprint penalty. It makes no sense to penalize somebody for executing a move perfectly. Also, for weapons that have a bayonet attached to them, during standard gun combat, the bayonet will negatively affect the recoil of your weapon. It'll elongate the time that it takes for your gun to be ready to fire after you come out of standard sprinting, and it will stop you from adding other attachments to your weapon that could go in its place. Now, these are trade-offs for having the bayonet attached. Without a bayonet, you have no facility to charge at enemies. It's interesting to see that they mention there are other attachments. We didn't see those in the beta, we only saw different variants of the weapons. So I'm excited to hear more about that still to come in the future. A couple of other things about the bayonet charge, one good thing and one bad thing. The good thing first of all, you can use the bayonet charge to get yourself out of danger. Let's say you're out in the open and you're trying to get to the cover that's about 50 meters away, you can activate the bayonet charge and you will run faster into that cover. Not only that, but you will get the benefit of slightly decreased damage hitting you if anyone tries to shoot at you. It's a good way to get out of the gunfight, but you have to remember that once you get into cover, you will be limited in sprinting for 5 seconds afterwards, because you didn't kill anybody when you were charging with the bayonet. And the last piece of information, the bad bit, when you charge with the bayonet, you will have reduced sensitivity of the direction that you're traveling in. So you will need to move your mouse further across the mouse mat, or you'll need to turn faster with the analog sticks on your controller. So make sure you line yourself up with your target and then run for it. The melee system in Battlefield 1 has a lot more going on than in previous titles. It adds a whole new layer of close quarters combat into this game. It's been refined to work more seamlessly and remove wonky animation glitches. It's been expanded to include different melee weapons, completely different, not just knives anymore, with different statistics as to how they can attack enemies, and they've introduced the bayonet charge system. Now my only message to the developers here would be that they need to make a clear distinction as to which melee activation will occur when you hit that melee button. Countless times in the open beta, I wanted to use my pickaxe to take down a player from behind and activate the takedown animation, and instead, my bayonet charge would activate, leading me to look like a bit of an idiot, screaming as I ran past my target. If you get the systems on two different buttons, I think that would solve the issue. Just before I go today, if anyone out there has missed any of my Battlefield 1 videos over the last few weeks, I have uploaded quite a lot of them. I uploaded, I think, 9 or 10 during the beta. Then there's a link in the description to my Battlefield 1 playlist that includes every single Battlefield 1 video that I've ever uploaded. And I think if you watch it backwards, it will just go from the most recent video to the first one that I ever made. So if there's any that you've missed, it's likely gonna be in that playlist. And that way there's just more information that you can take on for the launch of Battlefield 1. Speaking of the launch, I will be doing some tips and tricks videos. I've been noting down so many different things throughout this launch process all the different tips that DICE have been giving us, and I'll bundle them into a few videos at the launch so that you can be ready out there on the battlefield. So there you are, all up to date on how the melee system works in Battlefield 1. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think this new system is cool and different, or do you prefer 
the older ways. Until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.